Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So, as we all know, the one thing that magicians can't live without is, of course, a pack of playing cards. Right, most magicians, the first thing that when they get up in the morning, they start shuffling a pack of cards, because that's how our life is. But, um, so naturally, I'm going to do a card trick. So, let's have you over there. Please just yell stop. Right here. Okay, now, it doesn't matter if I see the card, because, to be honest, whether I see it or not, I'm going to cheat anyway. So I'm going to cheat. So, watch. I'm gonna s now, I'm going to sign the card, so we'll recognize it for later. So, right, YMC on there. YMC. Right, can we see that there? I'm going to fold it up once, and I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold it up once. I'm going to fold it up twice. Now uh, I'm going to hold on to the card right here, and I'm also going to need something to make the magic happen. I have it in my pocket. It is, of course, a magic wand. Now all I have to do is tap, and what that does is it causes the card to completely and totally disappear. Oh, while you're looking at that, it's not my first day. It really is gone. Thank you. Now, as I said, magicians can't live without a pack of cards. However, Houdini said that um, no magician can call himself a true magician until he has mastered the cups and balls. So that's why, as well as a cup, uh, pack of cards, I also can't live without a cups and balls set. So here's my cups and balls routine. The idea is very simple. I just take a ball, I leave it in the hand, give it a tap, that's when that ball completely and totally disappears. Now, you weren't expecting it the first time, so I'll do it again with cup number two. Same thing, I just take the ball right here, I leave it in the hand, Give it a tap, and that's when that ball completely and totally disappears. Thank you. Now, cup number three is the hardest because you know exactly what to look for, but same thing, it just goes just a tap and it's gone. Now, of course, they have to go somewhere, and the answer is, of course, back underneath the cups. That's one, that's two, and that's all three balls back under the cups. Thank you. So now you're all thinking, wow, his sleight of hand's really good. And yes, it is, but this time to make it harder, to make my sleight of hand a bit more challenging for me, I'll place one ball under each cup. So now I can't do any sleight of hand because they're trapped under the rims of the cups. Watch. If I just do this, I can invisibly pull one ball out, invisibly pull this ball out, and inject them all into the center cup. Uh, over there, I think your name's Harriet. Um, by logic, logic, how many balls should be under each cup? Yeah, but we don't operate by logic. We operate by magic here. That's why these two should be completely empty and all three balls should be under the center cup. <laughs> We're going to do this again, but this time the balls are going to read the human brain. Yes, you heard me correctly. Uh, so let's go for you over there. So we have cup A, cup B, cup C. Choose A cup. Say it out loud. Listen carefully and try again. <laughs> cup A, cup B, cup C. Choose A cup, A cup. Go on. Thank you, you really got my hint. You can be my assistant for my next show. No, but watch, um, cup A, the ball knew that because it disappeared from cup B and it teleported to the cup that you were thinking of. Now, I know what you're thinking. What would have happened if, you, if she would have picked the other cup? If she would have picked the other cup, I would have placed this one under here, snap, shown that this one's disappeared, and both the balls are now under the other cup. Thank you. So now you might be thinking, um, this is cool, but it's a bit too confusing because it's using too many objects. Like, I'm using seven objects, you have two eyes. So let's eliminate a few things to make it a bit simpler. I'll eliminate the wand. We'll place the wand away, and I'll even get rid of this ball by placing it away into my pocket. And I'll uh, get rid of this ball as well. Now, that makes the game very simple to follow because you're only focusing on this one ball right here in the center cup. But if I take that ball, and I just uh, place it away into the pocket, and I just snap over this cup, something weird happens. The ball actually comes straight back. I don't know how, it just does. If I take it again, and I place it into this pocket this time, um, and I just snap over the center cup, something weird happens. The exact same thing happens. It actually comes straight back. One last final time. I'll place it into this pocket this time. Uh, just snap your fingers, Felix. Oh, it's a double snap. Could be a problem. Could be a big problem with the lime. But if you missed the lime, then you must have missed the lemon. But the applause cue is near the orange. But at the end of the day, this trick isn't called the cups and vegetables. It's called the cups and balls. The dive urn and cups and balls. The dive urn and cups and balls. Yeah, all right, I'll treat you to a bit more. Here's another one and another one. But under here, I have one last surprise for you. If we open this up now, it's actually a folded up playing card. And not just any card, it's actually the signed Queen of Diamonds. Thank you. So now you might be thinking, that was cool, but it was a bit too confusing to follow because it used too many objects. See, look, how many objects I have here. 
So this time we're only going to use one cup right here, just one cup. And I also have here these four American half dollars. So I have here one, two, one, two, three, four. So the idea is very simple. One at a time I'm going to get these coins to impossibly disappear from my hand and reappear somewhere absolutely impossible. It doesn't take a genius to figure out where that might be. Now watch, from here to there. Um, by the way, if I roll the coin like this, just shout out, does anyone know what this is called? It's actually called, well, close, but it's actually called High School Without a Girlfriend. I'm sure most of us can relate to that. No, but watch, from here to there, one at a time, so we'll put that about there. So I don't know how well you can see that, but how many here? Four. I don't know how well you can see it on the screen, but it's four. And then we've got uh, none here, watch closely. One, two, three. It's the first coin in the mug, in the cup, which leaves just three in my hand. Now this next one, this next one, you'll know when it goes across because you hear a clink, because there's already one in the cup. So listen for the sound. So you've got three there. So you see those three? And then one in the cup. Watch this next one. It goes long distance, up, 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 up. There we go. Done, which leaves just two. Now this next one. So that's two down, two to go. Watch, nothing here. Done. Did you hear it? Me neither, it must be hush money, but sure enough, there it is, which leaves just one. Now this last one, I'm gonna do it in a bit of special way so we see the exact moment. So watch, these three go straight into the cup. And watch this last one, as I take it here, go straight into the cup. No, it's not a French drop. This hand's actually empty because all of them are under the cup in again. <laughs> and to think about it, to think about it, I didn't even use a magic wand. So let's use a magic wand. And I also have uh, these four American half dollars. Now watch closely. I place it once in the hand. Nothing's happened yet. Twice. And on the third go, what happens is uh, if I just wave the tap, what happens is that coin will change to a Chinese coin with a hole in the center of it. Now it does get better, watch this next one. Now you know exactly what to expect. I just take it, I just give it a squeeze here, just a tap and that coin will change to a Chinese coin with a hole in the center of it. So that's two down, two to go, watch this next one. I just take it, give it a squeeze like this and it transform just like magic. So that leaves one last final coin. Now this one here is the hardest because um, when I wave over it here, it turns uh, Chinese. But then when I wave over it again, it turns silver. Watch it change from Chinese to silver. But if I wave it again, it turns silver. But if I take that silver coin, place it in the mug, give the mug a shake, they all turn back into silver. <laughs> but I'm gonna make this even simpler to follow. Watch, these three go away into the pocket. We're just gonna use one uh, coin right here. Now, one coin, no cup, no wand. This can't be easier to follow now. Watch, uh, if I take the coin here and give it a squeeze, it disappears I actually here. You can't see till I bring it back like that. If I take a piece of nothing, any questions? No. Um, if I take the coin over here, do this, the coin actually goes through my hand. Are we still following this anymore? Do we care anymore? That's the real question. No, watch, watch. We'll go for the big finish. I'll place the coin away into my uh, back pocket this time. But still, we don't have a person, so the air will have to do instead of somebody's ear. And that's the big finish. And that's not it. This is. Thank you. Thank you. You've been a great audience. Thank you for the opportunity.